Tom, and I'm here today with Kyle Bazzi of Build Highway. I'm also creator of AMS Fest, which Build Highway has also been a part of, and I'm thrilled to be your hostess for the next hour. What's even cooler than me being the hostess for your next hour is the fact that I get to hang with you and our co-host, Bill Highway. And Bill Highway has been a proud supporter of Review My AMS for quite some time now. And for those of you that may not know, Review My AMS is home to more than 700 end user reviews of more than 40 association management systems. And with the help of Bill Highway and other annual supporters of Review My AMS, we've been able to grow and we anticipate a 2.0 launch this summer. So stay tuned for that. So I'll get to introducing Kyle to you in just a moment, but let's go over a few housekeeping items first. This webinar is being recorded, as you may have heard at the top of the hour, and it will be accessible from the Bill Highway team within the next day or so. So if you find today's webinar helpful and you want it for future use, or you'd like to share it with one of your colleagues, please feel free, feel free to reach out to Kyle or myself and we'll be happy to get that webinar in your hands. Kyle will be fielding questions throughout the webinar. So if you have a question for Kyle about any of the content that he's gonna be presenting to you today, please use the chat field, the, um, chat field to um, submit your question. And Kyle will try to get to your question throughout the webinar. If for some reason he can't get to your question during the webinar, no worries, we are saving a few minutes at the end of the webinar to answer uh, your questions. So let's get down to today's business. I'm super excited to introduce you to Kyle Bazzi, Director of Growth at Bill Highway. He's passionate about solving problems and building relationships. His background comes from the financial world as the president of financial media outlet, Benzinga. And Kyle is a chapter relations expert. And this is how I know Kyle, it's really awesome. He's nationally known for his success in helping chapter-based organizations replace internal rifts with strong collaboration and shared purpose. In his tenure at Bill Highway, he has walked numerous associations, labor unions, fraternal organizations, all through the discovery processes, uncovering internal obstacles, and working to find a better way to effectively run component-based organizations. He does that through process and technology. Kyle regularly hosts free educational webinars, much like this one, for chapter-based organizations. And he also does monthly roundtables for component relations professionals in DC, Alexandria, Reston, and in Chicago. Kyle is a Detroit enthusiast, dog lover, and avid learner of new things. Now, without further ado, the game-changing insights today from Kyle Babby. Take it away, Kyle. Awesome, thank you, Terry. And wow, what, what an introduction there. Um, hey, everybody, how is it going? Um, I am super excited. Uh, I am a big fan of uh, Miss Terry Carden there and, and everything she's doing at Review My MS. So very happy to be here. Okay, so let's go and get into it. Um, let me do a quick sound check and make sure you can see my screen. So everybody in here, if you could just go into the uh, questions box, type a Y for yes, can you hear me? Or a N for no, um, and do the same for you can see my screen. Everyone in here. Hey, Susan, I know you. I see a bunch of familiar names in here. Jill, what's going on? Elizabeth, hi, great to see you. Kristen, Hannah, Jen, Allison, this is fantastic. So I was looking at um, all the associations registered. We have 60 associations that registered for the webinar today. Um, which is incredibly exciting. So um, everybody welcome. If you haven't uh, heard one of my webinars before, I really um, work to engage you all and make sure that you get something out of today, not just informational, but applicable. And we'll talk about that in a second, okay? So first and foremost, we're talking about auto renewals, um, but really what we're talking about are your members. So um, I found this quote uh, from Mark Jones at InSync Corporation. Um, they do a lot of great work with associations. And he says, we can work on more valuable member services than being a billing administrative association in which we're spending all of our time kicking dues notices, okay? So before we get started, I wanna talk to you about something and, and it's grow and adapt or die. And this is where associations are at today. I want us all to focus on one thing, okay? And if you've got your notepad out um, and you're taking notes, I know a lot of people um, like to do that or your Evernote up or, or whatever you take notes with. 
But what we're talking about today is your members, okay? So I want you to picture in your own life, so think about yourself right now, Elizabeth, Susan, Allison, Jen, David, John, Lawrence, Emily, all these people in here today. Think about what is your life like when it comes to subscription billing or automatic billing, okay? Um, I, I listed some of the stuff that I'm, I'm subscribed to up here like Costco, right? Um, I was thinking through and I have Netflix, I have Pandora, I have Hulu, or actually I don't have Hulu, I, I have Netflix. I, I do have Evernote. There's YouTube that offers subscriptions now. Google offers subscriptions. I'm subscribed and auto-renewed to all of my utilities with DTE and Consumers Energy. I even have an auto billing for my home insurance, my car insurance. I obviously, most of us are auto renewed with our uh, telecom companies like Verizon. And obviously the behemoth of them all, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime today, by the way, I don't know if, if you saw this recently, they're in half of the households across the United States. Take a second and think about that. Half of the United States households are auto renewed to Amazon Prime for $100, okay? This is the new world that we live in. We live in a world, and more importantly, your members live in a world where things are auto-renewed. They're simple, they're easy. So when I say grow and adapt or die, as an association, I want you to take a note. This is what you're competing with, okay? You are competing with technology that allows this stuff um, to create a very simple user experience. All right, so on your notepad or whatever you're taking right now, we're gonna be writing down some goals, but I want you to write down, uh, I want you to write down a question and I want you to think about it. How easy is it for our members to sign up and stay signed up as a member of our organization? Okay, think about that. And on a scale of one to 10, if you want, type it into the chat. Scale of one to 10, one being Kyle, it's absolutely atrocious. 10 being Kyle, we are Amazon, uh, uh, Amazon good. Um, one through 10, what would you rank your association right now? And I'm not gonna, none of this is gonna be shares, so don't worry about it. Um, uh, no one will know what you said. I got a three in here. What would you rank your association? Okay, one being atrocious, 10 being, we're as good as Amazon. Um, I got a three, I got a two, um, I got a three. Okay, great. So I, I got some more coming in right now. That's great. First and foremost, to solve a problem, you got to admit you have one, all right? So here's my purpose and my promise and, and uh, my guarantee today, okay? And I want you to hold me accountable to this. I want this webinar not to just be informational, but I want it to be applicable, usable. So today, I want each and every one of you to find one thing, okay? One thing that you're going to take away and actually go do. This webinar is only as good as you're engaged, and it's only as good as what I, the tools I give you to go and do something, all right? We have so many people um, that tell us uh, our education is amazing because they, they found one thing that they actually changed at their association. All right, so that's my goal for you today, okay? Whether that's, Kyle, I need to tell a story to my boss or my executives to get them on board. Kyle, I gotta get more information from my members. We're gonna cover a bit today, but I want you to take away one thing, okay? So here's our agenda. Our agenda is number one, we're gonna go over auto renewals in the association world, because a lot of those logos, all of those logos were for-profit companies. Number two is seven reasons associations love auto renewals. I'm gonna arm you with information and data and case studies for you to go take to your, your uh, organization at HQ there and find a way to sell the story if and only if this is right for members, okay? And we're gonna talk about that. But just because another association's doing auto renewals, it doesn't necessarily make it right for you, all right? So are auto renewals right for your association, okay? All right, you all buckled in? So I just wanna let you know, more people uh, typed into the chat on the, uh, the question I asked, rating your association. There's not a single association that is over a four, and that is a problem, okay? So we're gonna talk about how you guys can be change agents today. All right, auto renewals in the association world. Get your pencil sharpened here. So I'm gonna give you some stats. 29%, 29% of associations right now offer automatic renewals, all right? So if your boss is going, no one's doing this in the 
association world, it's not right for us. 29% already do, and that number is growing. 41% offer installment plans. Now, what's the difference? So you might, most associations obviously have that annual uh, um, membership that needs to be renewed every year. So an auto renewal could be an annual auto renewal, but auto renewals also easily allow you to offer installment plans. So maybe you break that up into a monthly plan or into a quarterly plan. All right, so 41% offer installment plans and 23% of members opt into auto renewal plans. We're gonna give some more case studies on the success of this, but 23%, this isn't about an either or option. This is about meeting your members where you're at. We talk to associations that say, Kyle, I, you know, we have members or we have companies that pay, um, and so they're never gonna do this. But then I asked them, but didn't you just tell me your biggest challenge right now is attracting a younger generation, maybe um, getting young professionals into your organization? And they go, well, yes. And I say, name one uh, uh, um, younger uh, 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 career professional that is, wants to print out a PDF off of your website, fill it out, scan it, send it back, it, all before they even pay you. And the answer is not a single one's gonna wanna do that, okay? So today's ground rules, all right? And then everyone get these written down? Today's ground rules, as you guys get prepared for this, uh, and Mary asked, will there be a recording? Yes, there will be, Mary. Uh, 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 today's ground rules for you. If you, if you haven't been on my, one of my webinars, <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna challenge you, all right? This isn't just gonna be, a, oh, this was cool information. Here's your challenge today. So your two ground rules are this, and write these down. Seek to understand the why seek to understand okay your challenge i get it whether it is someone above you in your organization saying it's a stupid idea or it's not going to work or why would we do that your your reaction needs to be to seek to understand on the other side just because auto renewals are working for another association you need to seek to understand what your members want okay so that's ground rule number one ground rule number two for you uh, and if you, I love Winston Churchill uh, quotes and I, I love reading him. And, and this one made a lot of sense is you need to have the courage uh, um, or it says courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Okay. So you're here, you're learning that already takes courage because you're going to go do something with what you learned today. And the second is courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Okay. So ground rule number two is you're going to be courageous, whether that means you need to stand up and speak and make change at an organization that, let me know if this sounds familiar, that, well, this is the only, this is the way we've always done it. <laughs> and this is the way we've always done it. Why, why would we change, right? Uh, how, how many of you have heard that? Tell me in the chat, how many have heard that in their association, okay? I got some really good tools in here at the end to help you build case studies for this stuff, okay? So if you're one of those, yeah, I've, I get that in my organization all the time, that I could shut down, not for any logical reason, but because inertia, right? Okay, so these are your ground rules today. So the question I wanna ask you is, do your members want it, okay? And how do you know? That's what we're gonna be focusing a lot on today because if this exists, then you can get it done, okay? It might've failed before. I met an association the other uh, week and they said, um, well, well, we did offer monthly installments. And I said, well, why'd you stop? And, and they said, oh, because of this and that, and it was hard to do, and we, you know, organiz you know, administratively, it was taking forever. And I looked at the, the CEO and I said, do your members want it? And he said, they loved it. And I said, so wait a minute, your members loved it. Let's concentrate on that, and then we'll get to how we get it done, okay? So do your members want it? Um, type in the chat right now, how, how many of you right now know if your members want auto renewals or monthly installments? How many of you? And you can type in too, well, we already offer it. But let me know, how many of you here right now know that your members want auto renewals? Type into the chat and let me know how you know, okay? All right, so as we're getting some of those answers in here, uh, check out the chat box because my marketing team is going to be throwing some links in here for you. And by the way, if you've never joined me on a webinar, you will never be sold anything from us, okay? There's about uh, eight people I know in here from associations that know that they do not get sold from Bill Highway. 
Today's all about you. So the first thing we're going to send you is just a couple examples. All right. So you can see uh, AMA here, the American Marketing Association. You could say you asked, we delivered. I love this. It means they asked. They found out that people wanted this. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the AMA offered um, automatic renewal service. Okay. Why? Because it's convenient. Why? Because their members asked for it. This is IEEE. This is one of the biggest associations in the world. Okay. Um, and, and this is another example of this, right? So you can now conveniently renew. All right. So why sign up for automatic renewal? Uninterrupted membership saves time, environmentally friendly. This is the kind of stuff that you can use as you're building a case to your higher ups. Or what I've been hearing a lot of lately is, how do I manage up? Okay, so these are tools. Use these examples. Um, but first, we're going to start with the members. Okay, so why auto renewals? Okay, why auto renewals? Um, oh gosh, I got a, a lot of a great comments in here. So you can see it says hashtag Jerry Maguire time. If you've seen that movie, you know it's uh, you know what I mean. Help me help you right now. Okay, so before we get into more of the meat. I want to ask some questions. So get back to your computer right now. If you're not there, take a look at the screen. I want you to think for a second about uh, the questions I'm going to ask you and then type those, those into the chat. All right. So I already asked, um, how, how do you know or do you know if your members want auto renewals? Okay. I want you to type into the chat right now. If, if you are trying to roll out something like this on a program or, or project, or if you have in the past, um, I want you to tell me what is your biggest challenge in getting something like this done at your association? All right, so that's question number one. All right, we're going to spend about 120 seconds on this, okay? But I want to make sure I understand so I can serve you guys best today. So what is your biggest challenge? You might be saying, Kyle, I want this so bad. Um, our members want this so bad. Now I want you to tell me why can't you get it done? David said AMS integration. Amen, brother. We're going to talk about that. That's great. What, what else do we have? So Mary just said, biggest challenge is having to choose to utilize or not utilize auto renewals for everyone. Mary, why do you got to do it for everyone? I, I'd be curious to know that. Allison said our due structure. Allison, what's, it, what's your due structure um, got to do with it? Let, let me know that one. All right, great. We're getting some great, great uh, uh, answers in here. Austin said, biggest mm -hmm. challenge is annual auto renewals with expiring credit cards. Oh, that's a good one, Austin. Uh, I've never seen Austin spelled with an E-N. I like that. Okay, great. I'm getting some more answers right here. Um, uh, so keep those coming in, okay? And the second question I want to ask you, all right? So I, I see a lot of the challenges coming in. The second question I want to ask you is, do you feel... Okay, do you feel like you, and I'm talking about Allison, Mary, Austin, Jason, Jen, Ariel, can you be a change agent to get something done at your organization? Okay, and why or why not? Because oftentimes uh, we identify issues, but then we struggle to figure out what to do next to change. Okay, what to do next to change. Okay, Mary gave me a resounding yes. I love it, Mary. Keep it going. Jill, what's going on, Jill? She said AMS and due structure, 17 options. That's a good one, Jill. We're going to go over that in just a second. Okay. Yes, yes. Mary said, because I'm smart. Gosh, Mary, I love you already. Uh, Allison said, yes, I can. All right, great. This is going to be one of the best webinars I think we've ever had. Hey, Jason. Jason said yes as well. Okay, great, guys. That's awesome. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to build the most important uh, point in the case study. And that is all about the members, okay? And then next, we're going to give you guys some tools to start building that case study. And we're going to get over some of these challenges. And I'm going to address some of these challenges at the end, like the expiring credit cards, like the due structures, like the AMS integrations, okay? So let's jump into what matters the most, and that is the members. So why would you do this in the first place, okay? Now, some of the stuff you guys probably already know or might already know, but hopefully we can give you guys a few little tidbits here and there that you're writing down to help build that study, okay? So number one, it is to offer members a more affordable plan to allow them to pay in, in, in those kind of installments, right? So this might be for early career professionals. This might be professionals between jobs. We, we had an association we were talking to and they said that, hey, I can't offer it for, for this, 
but these young professionals have been begging for it. Well, you can split it. You can offer installments for one type of membership and not the other, okay? And if it's the AMS integration, I want you to circle that because we're gonna talk about technology challenges and how to get over those, okay? Maybe it's retired professionals, right? So you have people getting out of their career but still wanna support the mission and vision of the association. Uh, what about self-employed freelance and contract workers, right? And the list goes on and on. So how, how can we help offer members a more affordable plan where that affordable plan makes sense, all right? So that, that's reason number one. So an example here is the American Occupational Therapy Association. Uh, my, uh, Sarah on my team here, she's gonna drop this link into the chat as well. But the objective that they had was to increase recruitment and retention of younger members. How many of you have that on your plan, right? How many of you are struggling to do that? I, I feel like it's 70, 80% of associations I talk to are, that is an objective of theirs because the associations of today are changing. So this one thing they found out, A AOTA, was that self-paying members are actually the most receptive in the organization. How cool is that? What, how cool is that data point? The ones that choose to go on auto renewal or monthly installments, they are the most receptive at AOTA, okay? The annual new member dues revenue went up $200,000 at the organization. If you're trying to make a case to someone above you, grab this link, circle this and highlight it. All right. And then they were 20 members were 27% more likely to renew after the first year. Holy moly, 27% more likely to renew after the first year. Okay. Now this organization did offer the option to all the members but that doesn't mean you have to, okay? This is just what was right for them, okay? So a couple of stats here. Again, I told you I'm gonna arm you with a lot today. A couple of stats, 15% uh, participant renewals, all right, was a $350,000 in increased dues revenue, okay? Now remember, this was annual new members. This was increased in dues revenue. That is phenomenal. So when people say, is it worth it, okay? Now, I, I, wanna, I want you to note something. How do you test this without rolling it out to everybody is a huge, huge part of this because you gotta get the program right. But if, if people are asking, is this worth it? This is the way you present it, okay? All right, so these are numbers that you can use in that case study. All right, number two, reasons for auto renewal. So eliminate barriers to the joining decision. I can't, so folks, we went through something recently here at Bill Highway. We, we called 500 associations, okay, 500. And we, we, we went through the join process, okay? I can't tell you how many uh, um, don't have the join button, like first thing on the page, and how many, I think almost uh, 90 associations out of the 500, we left voicemails for their membership teams that never called us back. We had to call back to sign up. It was absolutely incredible and not in a good way. So um, now I know some of you are sitting there shaking your head like Kyle. Yeah, that's, that's us, okay? So we got to do everything we can to eliminate the barriers to the joining decision, all right? Auto renewals is absolutely one of them, all right? So less restrained with money when you have those monthly installments. Members join or can join for the price of lunch, depending on what membership type we're talking about. They receive benefits immediately. The decision to join is easier, folks. It is so much easier when I can I'll just sign up for that monthly rather than this really big amount that I need to digest and swallow. Uh, trial membership without the fine print, right? Those are all uh, um, removing some barriers. Now, they might not be right for everyone in this, this uh, webinar or that's listening to this, but some of these are, okay? So find the ones that are applicable to you. So again, another example we have here, and, and we'll get you the link uh, again, is the Air Conditioning Contractors of America, okay? So their objective was they figured out that, hey, we, we, gotta, we gotta make it as easy as possible to join. They made that decision, okay? Now, if you're sitting there saying, Kyle, my, my executive team hasn't made that decision, then use this, grab these links, build this case study to help illuminate why it is the right decision for your organization. 
okay? But 40% of new members chose this option. If 40% of new members choose that option, they, that is astounding uh, uh, or resounding uh, uh, answer to did we need this? People give more monthly than one time, all right? Wrap your heads around that one real quick. You ever go to a gym membership and it's $100 for the year or $15 a month, right? And you end up paying more for, uh, you know, throughout the year through monthly installments than you did up front, okay? So the average one-time online gift equals $102. The average monthly gift equals 24, which is over double throughout the year, okay? That's an incredible number, okay? So monthly 39 versus annually 400. And 50. So they'll they'll pay more if they can pay monthly. All right. So that's another really good case study for you guys to check out. Okay. All right. And let's make sure we're getting those uh, in the chat. We are perfect. Okay. So you'll check those out um, in the chat from from Sarah. Number three, make life simpler for members. Okay. Members can set set it and forget it. There's no service interruption if they forget to pay. Okay, no forms or approval to cut checks, right? Um, and they can send out notice in advance. Members can, can update that account. This is, this is the way, this is the association of tomorrow. Whether, whether people in your organization believe that or not, it is, okay? Um, how many of you right now still have a process where people are printing off a PDF or they go there and it's very cumbersome to sign up? How, how, or join, how, how many of you have that right now? How many of you on the renew process, how many of you don't save their payment information so you make them do it all over again, right? <laughs> Jen, I love it. She goes, ah, oh, yes. Um, Jen, we're gonna make this case. This is the kind of stuff that, that you need to work on to make the case to, to get this sold in the organization as that change agent, okay? Number four, give your members options. Okay, so this is not a all or none. Okay, so whoever said earlier, uh, you know, we have a bunch of different membership types. First and foremost, let's find a way to test it and start small. But number two, let's find the membership types it works for. Okay, let's survey the members and figure out who is saying, gosh, I would love to pay a monthly installment. I, I was at a meeting the other day with the association and the, the CEO goes, well, our corporate members are never going to do this. And I said, that's beautiful because they don't have to. But what you're telling me is you're struggling to get millennials signed up to your association. And unless you offer something like this, you're providing a very big barrier because most millennials don't own a checkbook, right? So they're not gonna do that, right? So um, uh, give your members options. It doesn't have to be all or none. When you're framing this to your, your higher ups or your organization, make sure that you explain that very well. It doesn't have to be everybody is on auto renewal or everybody is on monthly installments. Um, so like as I was saying, some members rather pay all at once. Let them. It, that's fine. Um, member options. This is obviously a much uh, more budget friendly option. And sometimes rather rather than having that big sticker shock. Okay. This is a great stat. So 26 percent of members didn't renew in the, the survey because employers wouldn't pay or stopped paying, okay? Didn't renew because employers wouldn't pay or stop paying. So give your members options. Holy moly, this is a incredibly cute picture. Um, <laughs> I didn't notice that before, it's amazing. Okay, our graphic artist here page is amazing. All right, so number five, and this is, this is really important is, you know, we're gonna talk later about uh, um, idea versus execution, but you need to free up association staff time. How many of you, how much time is put into the renewal process today? You gotta find the members that owe, uh, are about to owe, you have to send out invoices, you have this process where you gotta get them to pay again, right? Uh, rather than taking the time and investing it, like that quote said to start the webinar, investing it into member value. You're, you're working on just getting paid. Okay, so freeing up association staff time. So less time on renewals, emails and calls, spend time on mission critical work. Um, who said, who asked the question, well, Kyle, the credit card uh, declines are killing us. I, I, it wasn't the exact verbiage, I'm, uh, I might be changing it, but 
there's something called, and I want you to write this down, whatever system you're using, uh, whatever payment process you're using, make sure they have something called account updater, credit card account updater. This functionality allows your organization um, or enables it to uh, automatically update credit card or debit card numbers when a member gets that new card reissued. So what does that mean? If you remember last year when Home Depot got hacked, which is not obviously no fault of, of the associations or your association, when Home Depot got hacked, there were over a million credit cards across the US that got uh, reissued, right? So the old ones were cut off and the new ones were reissued. Well, what credit card account update will allow you to do, if that member gets a new card, okay, because maybe the old one expired, was lost or stolen, when they get that new card, it automatically updates. So you don't have to reach back out to them to get new payment information, okay? Now, if the credit card gets declined because there's no room on it, there's nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. But if, if they get a new one, which is a lot of credit card numbers for you, um, it will automatically renew, okay? So credit card account updater, make, make sure you have that. All right, number six, uh, again, we're going over reasons, is eliminate unintentional non-renewal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a little game with you here right now. How many of you, and this is, uh, uh, a lot of this is in research, and we'll share the research with you, uh, for industry research. How many of you, what percentage do you think of members forget to renew? They unintentionally uh, become a delinquent or a non-member because they forgot or they didn't get around to it. Um, how many, what, what percentage do you think? All right, I got 32%, 15 to 20, 10, 15. Okay, great. So I'm gonna share that in just a second. So eliminate unintentional non-renewal, all right? No invoice lands on the wrong desk, all right? Especially if you're sending it to a, a corporate uh, member. If the invoice gets on the wrong desk uh, and causes them that, that to get lost. No tracking down new mailing or email addresses. 19%, 19% of members didn't renew because they simply forgot. So I want you to write on the, that notepad, how many members do you have? Okay, now what's 19% of membership for you? Huh? 19% of members don't renew because they simply forget. Now that changes from obviously association to association, but do the math. Okay, so when you're making your case study or your business case study for, for your higher ups, 19% of members or uh, industry average don't renew because they simply forget. So why are we doing this, Jill? Why, why would we do this, Ariel, David, Allison, Mary? 19% of members simply forget to renew. All right, now oftentimes, and I don't know if we have a CFO in here, but oftentimes the CFO can be the troublemaker sometimes, right? Uh, they wanna know cost, they wanna, they wanna know the risk, they wanna talk about all the things that are potential showstoppers for you to provide value to your members, okay? So number seven is all about them. Enjoy predictable revenue streams. And that word enjoy, CFOs would love those predictable revenue streams, okay? So the subscription model is a recurring revenue monthly, quarterly, yearly, um, that you can uh, better forecast your revenue for your association. That steady and predictable cash flow coming through, okay? 50%, 50% is the number of improved member satisfaction and retention, okay? So as you're building your case study, if you're improving members, and improving the finances, the operations, your overall association, okay? The question I'm asking right now is, is this right for you? And, and through all, all of these, I'm getting resounding yes. So then the question just is, how do we do it? All right, how do we do it? So those are the seven reasons, and those aren't the only reasons by any means, but those are the seven reasons um, that we want to share today for why to do auto renewals. Now, most of you are in here because you probably want to do auto renewals, right? And so that sounds great, Kyle. You know, and I've read uh, a bunch of ASE blog posts and I've talked to my AMS, auto renewals are awesome. But <laughs> how many of you are thinking this right now? This all sounds fantastic, Kyle, but you don't get it, dude. <laughs> all right. So what I want to talk about is, is being aware of something and knowing difference okay and I'm gonna ask you in a second which camp you're in but know the difference so know the difference of <laughs> I love this little graphic okay 
So yeah, there, there's a pain point. Um, okay, Kyle, yeah, there's, there's, you know, our members are asking for it. Like I said, I went to that association the other day and they said, our members love it, they want it. It's, we just can't do it, it's hard, okay? <laughs> so how many of you have this? How many of you, and I asked it earlier, how many of you know this is something your association needs and how many of you are actually in this bucket and struggling? And, and again, I'm, I'm, it's not, I'm not saying it's your fault, but your, your association has struggled to do the latter, struggled to execute. What I say is delineate the two. Can we agree? And in, this, in the meetings that you're having pushback or people are saying, Ariel, we can't do this. It's the way, this is the way we've always done it. You need to say first and foremost, improve it out and get confirmation. I like people doing it verbally. Do you agree that you now see why our members want this, that our members want this? Do you agree that our members would find value from this? Do you agree X, Y, Z, okay? And are you really saying that we don't know how to execute it? But if we can agree that it's something to do as an organization, we can figure this part out. Whether it's our AMS that has issues with it, whether it is um, uh, our membership type or categories, whether it's because we have chapters and they control it, as long as we can agree this and we need it, then we'll get here, okay? But you gotta delineate the two because oftentimes when people are saying, having this conversation about auto renewals or monthly installments or even other types of member value, you get naysayers in the organization saying, well, how's this gonna work? How's that gonna work? How are we gonna reconcile the data? How are we gonna update the credit card numbers, right? And you got to pull it back and say, wait, we're going to talk about that. But first and foremost, do we all agree on this first point, on the point that this is right, that we need this, okay? And if you can get everybody there, okay, Jason, yeah, sure, we can do it. I agree. I, I see the value. Awesome. Well, then now we're going to talk about how, how the heck do we get there, okay? But you got to delineate the two. All right, I see a lot of people um, saying uh, uh, that they need this, but struggling uh, on the execution and it's eating staff time. Um, Mary said, I would love to offer this, but our state association is likely going to jump on the bandwagon of our national association, which won't offer anything like this. I'm stuck and frustrated. Mary, I get it, amen. So let, let's start talking about some execution items, okay? So yes, there is a pain. How do, how do we get it done? All right, so um, know who pays for members dues. All right, this is first and foremost. Is it an industry employment trend? All right. Are, are, is it the, you know, what's the percentage of members paying out of pocket? Uh, potential, is this a potential barrier to joining or renewing? All right. So uh, in, in the stat here, 35% of the U.S. workforce is made up of freelancers. Okay. That, that's a growing trend and affects a lot of your associations. All right. So first and foremost, let's talk about who pays the dues. All right. So who pays the dues matters a lot because if, it's a corporation and you also have young professional uh, type uh, memberships. What I want you to concentrate on is not an all for one type solution. Who is this right for at your association? Okay. So I think it was Jill who said they had a bunch of membership types, but I want you to type into the chat right now. Um, what membership type is most likely to get uh, a lot of value out of this? Okay. Who do you think, uh, what members or member types do you think Will derive a lot of value out of this or do you not have a good membership type for a younger generation or maybe not even younger but a generation or a type of member that would want something like this okay um how, how who in your organization would this be for because it, it doesn't have to be for everybody all right so that's number one know how members prefer to pay dues okay so ask yourself do you know your members comfort level do they want to pay dues by credit card, EFT, paper checks? Is it across the board? Are you saying, Kyle, our older members want to pay this way, our younger members want to pay the other way? You know, I just, I, uh, Facebook just came out with their, um, their quarterly earnings, and I was listening to, uh, to Zuckerberg talk, and I, I could not, I thought they made a mistake with this number. Do you know that over 85% of their revenue, 85% came from mobile ads? Let that sink in. There's 2 billion people on Facebook, all right? A third of the world's population or a little less than a third. 85% came from mobile, all right? 85%, that is where the world is going. Okay, so how 
do your members prefer to pay dues? Is it is it online? Is it mail? Please please tell me that you're you're keeping mail because there's some members that want to do it that way. But tell me you understand that it's all going online in a step further. It's all going mobile. Okay. So know how members prefer to pay dues. Kyle, why, why are you telling us this? I, I'm telling you this um, because you need to, these are very important points to understand to, to make sure auto renewals are successful, to make sure monthly installments are successful. You might be in the right ballpark, but you still can't find your seat because if you don't know some of this, your execution of the rollout could be a little amiss, okay? So uh, moral of the story here is this is all about the members. So learn as much as you can about the problem and pain point that you'll be solving. Okay, so back into the questions. This is always my favorite question of a webinar um, for a few reasons, but how many of you have actually surveyed your members around this topic? And I'm gonna wait on this one because I want you all to answer. How many of you, we have dozens of associations in here right now, how many of you have surveyed or polled or whatever you call it, how many of you have gone out to the members and asked these questions for this project, okay? How many of you have engaged with them? How many, have you, have you called some of them? Maybe, and maybe it's not your role, maybe it's somebody else's role, but have you learned from the membership team? How many of you have done the work to find out the most important thing, do, do your members want this? We got a bunch of no's coming in and in, in, in a couple of yeses. So Allison, no, uh, David, no, uh, Jen, yes, a few years ago. Good, good. Um, we got Ariel, no, Jason, no, uh, D'Amico, yes. Um, <laughs> Mary's, Mary's laughing. <laughs> Jill said, my work hasn't surveyed members on anything besides post-conference events. I'm pushing it. Go, good for you, Jill, you gotta keep pushing that. Okay. So if you are a no, or if you haven't done it recently, and recently I would, I would, I would constitute as 12 months, okay? But you, yours might be different. But, and the reason I say 12 months is because even if it was three years ago, you gotta recognize that 10,000 baby boomers are, are retiring every single day, right? So every year we have a little bit more of a transformational shift in the workforce and in, in your association, okay? So um, if you need a sample survey, uh, type in to let us know, okay? Type into the chat and let us know, do you want us to send you a sample survey? We, we would be happy to send out some of the stuff that we've seen in the past, okay? So just let us know that. I don't have that prepared here today, but we're happy to provide it, all right? So don't sell your members something they won't use. Verify that interest, okay? So ask yourself, if employers pay, will this work? Will members be reimbursed or how do you... Um, credit back something that was uh, charged. Do you have technology in place? Let's address the AMS issue. How many of your AMSs can actually um, handle installments and how many of can handle auto renewals? And what is that AMS? Okay. All right. So can your, uh, can your AMS handle installments or auto renewals? All right. If the answer is no, there are solutions out there for you. That's why I'm asking. Okay. So can your association management softwares, can they uh, um, offer what you're looking for? All right. All right. So we're going to talk about some key takeaways here, and then we're going to talk about some execution. So when it gets to the members, number one is listen. Okay. As most of you are, are in this webinar, that means you're progressive. That means you are a change agent. And, and your, I see your frustration here in this question box as your answers continue to come in around, Kyle, we, I need this so bad, it's so frustrating, okay? So what I, what I tell even my team here at Bill Highway, when you wanna get something done, go to the client, go to, go, to, go to the people we serve and tell the story of them. Don't tell them, don't, don't try to get something sold inside our company um, that you think is right. It doesn't matter about you. It matters about the people we serve. Okay, so what do they need? And how can you tell stories about the collective group and individuals in that business case study? Okay, number two is research. Um, find the problems that, that are at your organization. So maybe some of you tried this and it sucked administratively, but it was great for the members. So 
let's research ways to reduce staff manual processes, okay? If, if you wanna go into depth on a single problem that you have, just type into the chat and say, Kyle would love to talk. I will spend time with you just walking you through other examples from associations, okay? Whether that's AMS integrations or whether that's um, uh, manual processes or Kyle, we got this, we got this uh, uh, file from PayPal that had all of these um, uh, amounts on it with a sum that we had to go through each and every one to reconcile it to the database. Oh my, my gosh, my, my team was like freaking out. Okay, whatever those problems are, um, research them, ask people, uh, get involved, talk to us, go on collaborate. There's ways around it, there's ways to solve it. Okay, um, keep takeaways, make sure you're compliant. All right, make sure card data is stored securely. Don't let people at your organization take credit cards over the phone. Um, don't don't uh, store your, the information yourself. There's great technology out there to do that for you. Okay. And the last one is trust. So properly communicate these changes with your members and what to expect. Going back to that AMA uh, uh, page, that that slide we had, I loved the first line. You spoke, we listened. Okay. Trust is all about that. You spoke, we listened. Here's the changes we're making because you wanted this. All right, when it's about them, you're still gonna have some bumps in the road along the way, but you're going to get the most important thing right. And that is what members want, all right? So here's a little extra for you. So I'm gonna, um, we're gonna pl uh, plug this into the chat for you. This is an automatic renewal agreement. So this could be um, in the T's and C's and a checkbox. Um, associations do it different ways to opt in to auto renewal. Okay, so the uh, this is from AIIP. Okay, so again, we're not making this stuff up. This is in the real world. Um, so we're going to drop that link into the chat for you. But here's a little a little extra for you uh, to help you along the way. Okay. So I found this quote. And I really like this. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy not into fighting the old, but building on the new. Okay. The secret to change is to not focus all your energy uh, into fighting the old, but on building the new. How many of you have a, a great template for building a business case study? All right. How many of you? So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second because I'm going to jump over to a web page. But I want you to answer that question in the meantime. How many of you have a really great uh, um, template? to build a business case to go sell it or manage up? How many of you? A lot of what we talked about is listening to your members. And if you have chapters, maybe listening to your chapters, you have a really good uh, template for this. Okay, I wanna get some answers here. Cause we're gonna provide some tools for this part. So when we talk about execu execution, this is uh, the, the framework for it is often uh, um, you know half the battle okay so I got I got some people coming in David said halfway there so so take a look I'm gonna show my screen again here so there's some really really great things that um, uh, we, we can get you okay so number one um, we I've heard this this concept a lot lately is how to manage up okay how to manage up so you can see this is on the Harvard Business Review this is an incredible uh, um, incredible issue of their magazine about how to manage up. So if if you want to get this, um, we're gonna we're gonna give you to get this today. All right. So type in the chat, say Kyle, I would love to get that. We got a lot of people in here. We're gonna give this. We're gonna pay for five of you to get this today. Okay. So how to manage up? Okay. So we talk about execution now. This is super important. All right. And then there's a, a ground rule that I have for my team here at Bill Highway. When you don't, um, when you don't know something, uh, we say hashtag Google it. <laughs> hashtag Google it. So really, you got to be good at defining your problem. So if your problem is I've never done a case, uh, business case study, Google it. Okay. I I went ahead and I I wanted to show this to you because I Googled it today, um, and I wanted to show you how simple it is. In Bill Highway, we have our own way of doing it. It doesn't mean it's right for you, but Google it. Okay, so we'll send these links out to you in the chat, okay, for, for you to take a look at. But I implore you, again, research. 
go look up the stuff. It is out there, okay? This stuff is out there. The, this was the screenshot from earlier of a really good um, one-page uh, business case proposal that you could build into several, all right? Now, let's pause for a second. I want you to write something down, okay? Is if you're going to do a business case proposal, get people's buy-in on how you are doing it, the framework, before you put all the work in, all right? I can't tell you how many times I see someone come up with something great in their minds. They do it, they put weeks, months into it, they go present it, and people are like, this format is not what we, what we like. Okay, so get buying on the format. Hey guys, can we agree on the problem? Can we agree that we need this? Get, everyone, get everyone's buying on that. All right, here's how I'm going to show the, the, the proposal. Is everyone on board with this? Okay, um, that is super, super important. That business case, case proposal is so important. Uh, hey, Sarah, on my marketing team, we got a lot of people that want the, uh, the Harvard Business Review, okay? So if you, anyone else wants it, please let us know in, in the chat, okay? All right, so the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not into fighting the old. Don't even argue with the person that's saying this is the way we've always done it, all right? If they say that, you counter with the new. You counter with, well, 28% of our membership said they want it, okay? That's what you counter with. So first and foremost, I saw a lot of no's on the survey. Go find that first. Don't fight people on what you think inside your organization. Fight for the members. When you do that, you will trump them, okay? You will, you will trump them. And you know what? If you don't trump them, go to someone else. Find others that are looking and are as frustrated as you and want to in, enact that change in the organization. Okay, so focus all of your energy, not into fighting the old, but building on the new. The new is simply what your members want, okay? That is what the new is. All right, so we are at 54, so six to the top of the hour. Um, as I told you, I'm, we're not here to sell anything about Build Highway, but we did put something together for a lot of, uh, a lot of you. So if you have chapters or components, um, we are throwing the first ever uh, event specifically for associations that have chapters uh, or state affiliates or components or divisions or sections, whatever you call them. It's on October 13th, okay, and it's in the uh, D.C. area. Um, it's at the Hyatt in Arlington. We're doing this with Mariner uh, Management uh, and Marketing LLC, Peter and Peggy. Um, and what this is all about is it is a day dedicated to the education for people that are running organizations that have components, okay? Um, so we are super excited to do this um, and, and we've recognized the problem, why? Because you guys told us, uh, associations with chapters have told us that they feel alone, they feel like there's nothing out there for them, okay? So we're doing something about that, all right? So that link will, um, will be in the chat for you as well, okay? All right, I wanted to leave some time for some Q&A, so I'm gonna go through questions right now. If you have any more, please throw it into the chat. Um, and do me a favor real quick too. So if you did or didn't get any value out of this today, let me know, how, how can we get better? Can you let us know that this was great, I would love XYZ, or Kyle, more tools and templates, or I need more research reports, or Kyle, I need more execution items. Just let us know, how can we improve for you when we're doing these webinars. I would love to learn that, all right? And also, what other questions do you have, okay? So I'm gonna start going through those in um, uh, the questions box here on the GoToWebinar. So Emily said, X Catalyst cannot handle auto payments. We have to enter them manually. So Emily, have you explored doing the billing and um, the payment processing outside of X Catalyst and having that information automatically tie into the AMS? That question's specifically for Emily. So that's that's one way to solve that, Emily. And, and if you want, we can go into more depth on that. Um, Jason said, our, our current version is not, but we are upgrading and will implement auto renewals and installments. Jason, will you let me know what, what, um, what AMS is that? I would love to learn that. David, not yet, but it's being released in winter of 2017. Awesome, David. And that's a Nimble user, and we're huge fans of Nimble. Um, so David, it sounds like you got a great some, some time to um, build the case. Um, David, do you have your organization on board with doing auto renewals? I'd, I'd love to learn that. Um, 
also know we are Kyle, we are transitioning or transitioning for an AMS that handles auto renewals very clunkily. And I think we're losing members without tracking them or reaching them. We're transitioning to a new AMS and I want to make sure that we get it set up so it's smoother and easier for members and staff help. Uh, Austin, what, what are AMS are you moving to? I want to make sure I didn't ask you that already. Let me know which one you're moving to. Um, so here's the deal, Austin, is what we, what I, I got some questions to ask you and I'd love to unpack this with you, but how can we um, message this to the members as a positive, even during the transition, which I know can be terribly hard. So Austin, let, let's unpack that. Um, so Allison uh, Barrier, what if someone joins the installment program? What if they leave before the end of the year? How does that affect financial bottom line? Allison, amazing question. You absolutely are gonna get some people that unsubscribe, okay? Uh, and I say unsubscribe, uh, uh, but they, they, they don't, uh, they opt out, okay? So a couple of things. Number one, let's step back and look at the bigger picture because as you will have instances of those individuals, the question is the, the overall, right? So maybe you get more people that wouldn't have joined that make up for the people that leave early. That's number one, okay? Number two is about the value and what the association is ultimately providing to these in individuals, okay? So if, you know, this is about uh, um, auto renewals and monthly installments is about making it very seamless to join and stay uh, joined or a part of the association. If people are leaving, that's a really good opportunity to find out why. How many of you call members that cancel or don't renew and don't want to renew? How many of you, how many, and I, I say you, because you're, you're representing your organization, but how many of you know what the reasons are? Allison, do you know those? Could you, could you let, me, let me know if you know those? Because those are the things that you need to concentrate on when they're leaving early, all right? It's those value prop items. Um, now also, Allison, I want you to concentrate on one other thing, because I'm sure you're getting this question from people in the organization. The other question is, do they come back? Okay, do they come back? Uh, to go off the Facebook example again, what do you think the percentage, this one's really fun, what do you think the percentage of Facebook users that delete their account, what do you think the percent is that come back? What do you think that percentage is? The people that delete their Facebook account, how many do you think come back? I recognize this isn't, um, I recognize this isn't uh, a paid service in, in a sense, but I wanna make a point here. Uh, um, how many do you think come back? Yeah, Ariel said it, it's 85%, right around there. 85% of people that delete their account come back to Facebook, okay? Um, so it's all about membership value, right? Uh, uh, and Allison, you, you just said it, right? Majority is they didn't find value. That's another challenge of ours. So Allison, here's what I would say. A lot of associations, uh, not a lot, how, how do I phrase this? There are associations that will say, well, we're not gonna offer it because they'll cancel. Yes, you're right, but it's not because of the auto renewal or monthly installments. It's because of membership value, okay? So that is, A, that's a whole separate webinar that we have, um, but it's also, that let me put it this way that is your problem then okay so it's not so much auto renewals and monthly installments that is right if your members that find value and are staying there want it give it to them the ones that are it's easier to cancel quote unquote i would ask a question and then you know find out a solution for that problem okay um there's no doubt folks that membership is changing uh, whether it's age, whether it's preference, whether it's the way they consume content or the way they want to network or the way they want to, you, you know, fill in the blank for your association, it is changing. So the value prop question is extremely, extremely important. Allison, I kind of feel like that's a cop out from my end because you're kind of left going like, yeah, I know that. But that's where I would concentrate on, okay, so the majority of them that didn't find value. Allison, let me ask you one more question. Did you guys ask? What would they find value in? Why would they? They obviously signed up at some point. Why would they stay? Why would they continue to pay the organization? Okay, so if they didn't find value. What, what value could you provide to keep them a part of the association? That's another question that, that I would ask there, okay? 
Okay, we're two minutes over here, folks. So I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, what we're going to do is this. Uh, we got some free magazines to give out, uh, and we're going to pick those and email you. Uh, but if we didn't get to your question, I'm going to make a commitment that we will absolutely answer them for you, okay? Um, if you want, I'll, I'll type my email into the chat as well. It's just kbazzi at billhighway.com. We work with over 6,000 uh, 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 nonprofit organizations like associations. So let us know your problems. If you want to dig in further, uh, or more importantly, if you want to connect with another association that has a similar problem and has solved it, and you want to learn the do's and don'ts, shoot us an email. We're happy to make those introductions. Um, and there's a lot of associations that let us do that because we give them so much free education. Okay. Um, so besides that, Terry, Thank you so much. I remember meeting you outside of an ASAE event over a drink and I was just like, you are my, our peoples. Um, and it's been so great to see you flourish and, and grow, um, review my AMS and, and now AMS Fest. So thank you so much for, for allowing us to um, hopefully educate, maybe even entertain uh, your audience. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much. We're gonna send out a, a, um, the slides and we're gonna send out a recording for everybody um, as well as pick some winners for the uh, HBR magazine about how to manage up. Um, hope everyone has an incredible rest of your week. And um, if I don't see you um, soon, hopefully you'll be at ASC Annual. Thanks everybody, bye.